Hey, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com. In this Kindle Q&A video, I wanna answer a very common question that I get all the time, which is how can I get my Kindle books written for me and how can I get them written inexpensively? I get this a lot and there's a lot that I have to share on this subject. Uh, first, I think it's really important to understand there's really two different ways of doing it. Number one is you can be an author and you can write your own books and also do the publishing at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of great authors out there that you know, love writing, uh, you know, they enjoy being an author. There's nothing wrong with that. If, if writing is your skill set, you enjoy it and you wanna you know, maybe publish books under your, your own name and market them under your own name, then there's completely nothing wrong with that. So that's the one strategy. The other strategy, on the other hand, is just focusing more so on the publishing and the marketing. Just like a big publishing company out there, such as HarperCollins, Penguin, all the big ones, they're essentially a publishing company that works with different writers. Uh, in a lot of cases, they work with ghost writers, they hire writers, they maybe even buy already existing books out there, they own the rights to them, and they have a team in place and they focus solely on the publishing and the marketing of books. Okay, so they're involved in the Kindle publishing aspect. And I think that appeals to a lot of people because you know, uh, you know, a lot of you maybe that are watching this video, maybe you're not a great writer, uh, you know, maybe your English isn't that great, uh, or maybe you just don't enjoy it. Um, so those are the, the two different methods out there. Now I've done both and have, I've had experience with both and success with both as well. Um, I've written maybe about a dozen of my own books um, some of which are under my own name personally, others that are under different pen names and pseudonames. And I've also outsourced and published over 150 books under different pen names, pseudonames, but I didn't write them myself. I hired ghost writers, uh, you know, I, I bought books from other uh, companies or writers out there. I own all the rights to it. I just put, pay a flat fee for that. And again, like I said, I just focus on the marketing and the publishing of that. Now, while I enjoy doing both, I enjoy writing and you know, that's a skill that I have. Um, what I learned though, is that I can leverage myself and actually make more money by focusing more so on the publishing. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say it takes you a certain amount of time to write your own book. You know, everybody has a different speed and pace, but you know, writing can be time consuming and it's a, a very creative uh, you know, venture. What I realized though, is that in the amount of time that I was spending to write my own books, I could outsource and hire ghost writers to write books for me, and the pace that it might take me to write one of my own books myself, I could hire you know, ghost writers to write five or 10 books for me. So in the same amount of time, I could 10X you know, my, my, uh, my speed of imp implementation, my, um, just the speed at which that I could publish books and make more money. And so that's why I kind of made the transition to focus more on the publishing and the marketing side because I enjoy that more. Just like in the music industry, you know, you'll see a lot of uh, you know, great artists out there that can sing, they're very talented, or even actors uh, as well. Um, you know, very talented actors in the movie industry, a lot of them make the transition to producing or maybe even creating their own record label because what they realize is that when you have a record label, you can now start to sign talent under you and you can actually make a lot more money because you know when you're the artist, that's very time consuming. But when you focus and you kind of take a step out of that and you focus more on being the record label or the publishing company, now you're in a position where you can have a team and you can put more albums out there, more books out there, and essentially scale up a lot faster, okay? So that's why I prefer just the publishing and marketing route. But again, there's nothing wrong with either. Uh, you know, both are very common. You know, I, I, I've heard a lot of people out there that get upset uh, the fact that others are, you know, maybe hiring other writers to write books for them and things like that. This has been going around for, you know, a hundred years. Um, you know, ghost writers are very common in the writing and the publishing industry. These big publishing companies, they, they hire ghost writers, they interview celebrities, uh, top business people. It's not like these business people are actually sitting there writing their own books. A lot of cases they're just being interviewed or uh, by a writer, you know, and they're just anonymous behind the scenes. And you know, the actual celebrity or the person's having their book written, they just pay a flat fee for that. In fact, I know companies out there where you can pay $150,000 
They'll write the book for you and they'll essentially create a New York Times best-selling book for you. You can buy yourself to the top of the New York Times best-selling list. It's very, very common, okay? Um, now, when it comes to uh, getting your Kindle books written for you and getting it done inexpensively, there's a few things I'll share with you on that. Uh, number one is you always have to make sure that your books are quality, okay? I really wanna emphasize that because I think a lot of people when, you know, when it comes to outsourcing books or hiring ghostwriters, a lot of people don't care about quality and they're just really, you know, they, they really care about the price and what they're investing and they wanna get stuff done really, really cheap and inexpensively. And so therefore they're left with just a really low quality book and they go out there and they publish it and they try to market it. And sure enough, you know, maybe you can make money in the short term, maybe you can have some success with that, but it's really just a matter of time before that's not gonna be sustainable and profitable over the long term, okay? So quality, I really wanna emphasize that because that's the most important thing that you have to know in terms of making your Kindle book uh, successful over the long run. Now at the same time, what I've also noticed amongst people that focus on publishing is they're a perfectionist with this as well. And I've also seen a lot of people that go ahead and they invest thousands and thousands of dollars in getting a Kindle book written for them. And you know, they publish it, they market it, but sure enough, it doesn't sell. And in my experience from doing that as well, because I spent over a year once writing a book, I've invested a lot in books as well, I always try to keep my expenses low and to a minimum because I want to mitigate my risk. You know, it sucks to have to go up there and spend thousands of dollars on something and then get no return back. I'd much rather keep that investment that costs relatively low and manageable for myself and publish something that is high quality and you know, proves and validates that there's a market there, this is profitable, and then I'm on the right track, and then go back and maybe invest a lot more money into the book. So I think that's an important concept I wanna share as well. Make sure it's quality, but it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be a Stephen King bestseller or whatever, uh, and you can always improve the book and make it better and better over a period of time, which is what I really encourage as well. Uh, now, another thing that's worked well with me, for me, with that being said, is focusing more on starting off with a shorter book, especially if you're brand new to Kindle publishing. A shorter book could basically be maybe a 30 page book that covers a specific subject and is more of like a beginner's guide to something, okay? So it, it's not this advanced, high level type of book. Um, again, the writing doesn't have to be Stephen King or something like that, but you know, it's just a more of a short read. In fact, on um, Amazon, they have a category for short reads. So Short books are totally acceptable. I know a lot of books out there, they're 10 pages long. I know uh, children's books are relatively short. I know a lot of fiction short stories as well. So there's a lot of uh, you know high quality books that are shorter. So your book, I wanna kinda dispel the myth that you have to uh, have a 200 page book because a lot of people believe and they're stuck in that mindset that the longer a book is, the higher quality it is. And that is the furth furthest thing from the truth. I can point out a lot of books that are 400 pages that are complete garbage and fluff and basically just a bunch of words and you can kind of summarize it you know, in 10 minutes. And I also know books that are very short that are you know, 15 pages, 20 pages, 30 pages. In fact, a lot of the Harvard books, I don't know if you've seen these, but I recently read a great one called Managing Oneself by Peter Drucker, one of the greatest business minds uh, of all time. And it's a short book, maybe like, uh, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's, it's like these mini pages and you can read the book in less than 30 minutes. And that was a high quality book. I mean, very powerful. Um, a lot of top business people read that book. Another great example is this book that I love called It Works. And I think that one's like only 10 pages and it's like this big as well. You'll read it in about 10 minutes. And that book changes people's lives. So there's a lot of books out there, like I said, that are short, that are powerful, that you know, are right to the point, that are you know, great quality books. And there's also these long ones that in my opinion, you know, aren't that great. So that's the first thing I wanna emphasize um, when it comes to the quality and kinda dispel and just change your level of thinking around that. You know, a lot of people haven't learned to accept that the publishing world has changed a lot and it is changing. A lot of the old school authors and publishers, 
they're still kind of caught up in the old mentality around that. But Amazon and Kindle is changing the whole landscape. They're making it so that anybody can be a publisher. Anybody can self-publish their own book and their own works. They can put it up on Amazon. And you know, they don't they, they have restrictions around the, the the length of a book. You know, I, I think the minimum last time I checked was about 2,500 words. Uh, but they're making it available for anyone to publish whatever they want. You know, you can publish something that's low quality, high quality. That's just a self-publishing world. You don't have to go through traditional publishers and stuff anymore. And so it's shifted in a big way. And also the market has shifted as well because most of people that are online, most consumers, they don't want to read and consume long, long books. There still is a market for that, but the way that things are is people like to consume things in shorter formats. You know, YouTube videos, uh, you know, courses, audiobooks, things of that nature, and even books as well. A lot of people love short reads. That's why Amazon created that category for short reads because again, it's very, very common. So my uh, philosophy and typically what I recommend to people that join my program is, you know, do a high quality book, but let's not make it this long, long book. Let's try to keep it shorter, maybe around 30, uh, you know, 30 pages. Uh, usually most of my books are around 5,000 words. Um, you know, so it will cover a certain subject, more of like a beginner's introductory to a certain subject. And these are also books that I'm not selling for a lot of money either. I'm selling them in the price range of 99 cents to 2.99. So it's not like someone's investing $10 or $20 for one of these books. So that's what's worked fairly well for me. And again, the benefit of that is you're keeping your costs low. You can enter into a market rather inexpensively. There's not that much of a risk involved with it. And you know, if the book fails, for example, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. It's not gonna hurt you financially, whereas if you invest thousands of dollars into something, then that could be really, really detrimental and painful for you to, to have that risk. Uh, but at the same time, if your book sells and it does well, that's when you really wanna improve the book because whenever I have a book that sells, that's a passive income stream. That's an asset that you want to protect. And you wanna make it better and better and evolve that book so that you know, it, it can continue to sell and you can branch off into audiobooks and to paperback books. And really, I, I like Kindle because it's kind of like the platform to start with. And then once you've proven that you're into a great niche and market, then you can expand it into a series of books. And there's, a, there's so much more that you can do. Um, but again, I like to always start off small, especially if you're a beginner that, you know, that's just starting out in this process, okay? Okay, so now that I got that out there, how do you get books written inexpensively? Okay, well, there's a number of options for this. Uh, one is if you hire someone from North America in the United States, for example, typically you're gonna pay a lot of money for a book. And it does depend on the writer and of course their quality, their reputation, their credentials, all that sort of stuff, because you know every writer will charge different rates based on what they're worth and all that. You know, obviously if you wanna hire Stephen King, you know, someone to that quality and caliber or some of the top, you know, New York Times bestselling authors or, you know, some of the, the ghost writers behind the scenes that have written a lot of those books, you know, that could be, uh, you know, over $100,000 for them to write your book for you. So that can be very, very costly. Um, but again, you don't really need to have that level of book. Not unless you're like an expert and you really want to brand yourself and stuff. That might be something that I might do one day uh, for myself is hire someone like that to produce and, you know, actually become like a New York Times bestselling author. Um, but if, you know, so basically in the United States, there's gonna be a whole range, but it's obviously gonna cost you a lot more money because you're paying someone in US dollars. What I've found is if you go overseas and you hire someone in countries outside of the United States, maybe countries in Asia, I like the Philippines, for example, uh, you know, you can find some high quality writers there that know English, speak English, they studied English in university, they have great writing skills, they can do research for you as well, and they can produce a quality book for you, a short read, uh, you know, relatively inexpensively. In fact, you know, what would typically might cost you like $1,000 in the United States to get a, maybe a short read written, you can go to the Philippines and get, you know, a short read 30 page book written on a great subject that's really well written for less than $100. You know, so that's pretty amazing. And one of the reasons for that, again, comes from the currency exchange as well as just 
you know, uh, what you can, you know, you just get a lot more for what you pay for in a country like that. I think in the Philippines, I read somewhere that the minimum wage there is 56 cents an hour in US dollars. You know, so it's a lot different than living in the United States or North America. Uh, your money goes a lot further there. So if you can leverage your money in that way and hire someone overseas that can write and is skilled and uh, can produce a quality book for you, then that's one of the most uh, inexpensive ways to do it. You know, a lot of my freelancers, my graphics designers, my programmers, web designers, virtual assistants, they're all overseas in you know, uh, the Philippines and countries like that because I could hire someone for $3 an hour that, you know, that, that is just as good as hiring someone in the United States that might cost $10 an hour. So you know, if you can get a bargain like that and go overseas, then, then I say why not, go for it. Now one objection people have is, you know, is, there, is that person's uh, writing going to be high quality? You know, if you hire from the Philippines, you know, how's their English going to be, how's their writing style, things like that. That's also really important as well. Um, what you'll find just like anywhere, you're going to find some writers that are low quality, that aren't that great at writing, and then others that are really high quality that can produce great quality work. Uh, I like to use a website called Upwork.com. Okay, Upwork.com. There's a few companies that I like to use as well um, that I only share in my K Money Mastery members area, and the reason for that is because these companies they they hire writers and they have teams, they have editors, proofreaders, all that. They train them, all that sort of stuff uh, from all over, and they ensure a certain quality. But if I openly and publicly share them, then they're just going to get delayed on their work, and then all my members of my course are going to hate me for that. So I only keep that amongst my members area, the actual paid members that are part of that course. It took me a lot of time to find these writers. Um, but one simple uh, solution is Upwork.com, which is basically a website where you can hire freelancers from all over the world. So what you could do is go to Upwork.com and post a job there. Post a job that you're looking for a freelance writer that can write a, a short Kindle book for you that's maybe 5,000 words on this subject. You can give them maybe the title of the book. Obviously, you can work with them and give them certain information that you want included in the book. Um, the more, obviously, the better. Uh, you, know, you can allow them, if you'd like, just to research the subject. So if you're picking like a simple subject, let's say like meditation, let's say it's a beginner's guide on meditation, that's something that you know, one of these writers, they don't have to be an expert on meditation. They can go out there, they can research a lot of the stuff, put a lot of uh, great resources excuse me, together and uh, create a, a really great book for you. If you're trying to create a Kindle book on something that requires a higher level of expertise, then in that case, it would definitely benefit you to try to find someone that has that level of expertise that can write it for you. But that's why, again, I like to stay just to, uh, you know, the short reads, the simple guides, and I don't really go into anything that's that advanced, not unless I'm an actual expert on that subject. Um, okay, so you go to Upwork, you post that job. What you're going to find is you're going to have people that are going to bid from all over the world. And a lot of people are going to say, hey, you know what, I can do this job for $30. Other people will say, I can do it for $1,000. Other will say, I'll do it for $80, $100, $10,000, right? And you're going to get people bidding from all over the world based on, again, what their value is, what they, they charge, uh, the quality of their work, all that sort of stuff. The great thing is they're all bidding against each other and they're trying to compete to get your job. And the great thing with Upwork is you can go through all these options, you can interview them, and you can also look at their portfolios. You can actually talk to them and say, you know what, let me, uh, let me see the quality of writing that you've already produced. Can you send me some books you've already written, some articles you've written, you know, other blog posts. So you wanna do your due diligence to make sure that they're a high quality writer and that you're happy with the quality of their work. Um, you know, so you, that gives you the ability to see and kind of judge based on the quality and kind of work with someone that you're happy with. And again, all the different you know, prices are gonna rain, you know, are, are gonna be totally different. Uh, you can get some great bargains as well, you know, things you know, really inexpensively, which is great too. And a lot of them, they, they want to build their portfolio on Upwork. So on Upwork, another great thing is, is that you can see the previous jobs that someone worked. You can see their feedback and their ratings, and that's really useful too because you can see, you know, based on you know their past employers, the past the past jobs that they've done, 
uh, what other people have said about them as well. So that can help you make a decision on a quality writer, someone that you want to work with. Um, and again, a lot of them too, especially ones that are starting out, you know, they want the work or need the work. And in a lot of cases, they'll do it you know, inexpensively for that reason as well. So that's basically one of the, just kind of like the simplest way that I'd say that you can start to find a writer to write your book for you would be using a website like Upwork. Um, you know, when it comes to that, you're again, you're paying them a flat fee, whatever you negotiate with them through Upwork to buy the book from them so that you own the rights to it, in which case you can then go ahead and publish it and market it and everything. I actually have something called a ghostwriter agreement that I have inside my K Money Mastery course. This is something you can send to the ghostwriters. So, you know, just so that they can sign it and, you know, it has an actual agreement saying that you own the rights, you're transferring the rights of this book from them to you. I actually paid a lawyer to write this for me, cost a couple hundred dollars for me to do that, and I give it away to my members for free. Um, you know, so that's another uh, kind of like measure of protection as well. And I will say, you know, whenever you go this route, you're gonna have some good experiences and some bad experiences. Sometimes you hire a writer and they don't deliver on time, or you know, they uh, aren't as reliable as you thought, or maybe they have plagiarized something, which is something you have to be careful about as well. Uh, when it comes to plagiarization, I use a website called copyscape.com, which is great because you can just, you know, put in the book and it'll tell you whether or not it's been plagiarized from anywhere else. So. Again, you want to make sure your books are original and unique. That's the only way that they'll uh, be able to be published on Kindle anyways. Um, but uh, you know, that, that's, that's the world we live in. You know, it gives us the ability to find someone anywhere in the world and uh, get a, a great book written inexpensively. So to summarize this video, um, you, know, you can get your Kindle books done inexpensively. You can use websites like Upwork. I like to hire people overseas. I like to make sure my expense is relatively low and focus more on a short read as well. Uh, again, make sure your books are high quality because that's what's going to be sustainable and make you money in the long term. You know, if your Kindle book gets a negative review, in which case, trust me, it will. Every Kindle book out there gets a negative review, whether it's, again, Harry Potter or the Bible or any, any great book out there. They all get negative reviews. but. You want to use those negative reviews as an opportunity to improve your book, make it better and better and better. And that's really what I encourage everyone to do is focus on making your book better. Use negative reviews as feedback. And obviously, if, if you do get a negative one, you want to improve it right away. You don't want to wait till it gets several negative reviews because at that point, it can really hurt your, your rankings and your sales on Amazon and then your book obviously is going to stop selling. So quality, quality, quality. I want to emphasize that. Uh, but again, it doesn't have to be a super long book. So I say give it a try. If you want to know more about this process, uh, join my K Money Mastery 2.0 members area. Just go to kmoneymastery.com. I'll have a link below as well. I teach everything step by step in there. I share the companies that I use, uh, that I personally test and use, that I, that I love to work with, that produce great quality uh, books. And I like to work with companies, honestly, more than freelance writers because the companies, uh, have already spent the time to find them, to hire them, to interview them, to train them. They edit and proofread your books. They format it for Kindle. They, they just save you so much time. Whereas I found it to be pretty time consuming to have to you know, post a job, interview people, uh, you know, hire them, all that sort of stuff. And the great thing with working with a company is you can publish a lot more books. You know, if you only have one writer working for you, you know, you can, let's say you wanna publish 10 books, it might take them a while to produce 10 books for you. But if you uh, work with a company, they might have 100 writers working for them. And so they can produce 10 books in the same amount of time that you know, the one writer would write one book. So uh, again, it comes down to scaling and leveraging yourself. And that's why I enjoy running more of a publishing company because that gives you the ability just to do a lot more. And I'll just give you a quick analogy. You know, let's say that you're a contractor building a house. You know, when you're a contractor, in my opinion, the worst way of doing it is trying to do everything on yourself, on, on, by yourself. You know, trying to, you know, create the architecture and uh, you know do the flooring and the roofing and the electricity and the plumbing and the painting and doing all that stuff. That's a lot of work to build a house. Whereas a smarter contractor is the one that kind of manages and oversees the project and he hires an electrician, a plumber, a roofer, someone to do the foundation, someone to do the drywall, the kitchen, 
the bathtubs, all that sort of stuff for him. And because he's working on the business and not in the business, this then gives him the ability to build 10 houses at once. You know, he can build and scale up a lot faster because he's working smarter and not harder. So I want to leave you with that because that's typically the way I think in my publishing business as well as, you know, every business that I own. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this bit video and it answers that common question that I get. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you soon.